about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. No amount of spiritual activities and even impartation will ever substitute or replace the need for obedience. That means you cannot substitute obedience with prayers. You cannot substitute obedience with confession. You cannot substitute obedience with spiritual activities. You cannot substitute obedience even with impartation. Obedience is that powerful and is that much of a requirement as far as you're actualizing God's promises is concerned. There are many believers who perpetually walk in disobedience to the principles of scripture but they pray while in disobedience they confess while in disobedience they carry out spiritual activities while in disobedience they even receive impartation while in disobedience none of these spiritual activities as profitable as they are will ever replace the place of obedience is someone learning this is very powerful so while you pray while you confess scripture while you engage in spiritual activities while you submit yourself to receive impartation you must be sure that your heart is determined to obtain grace from God to walk in complete obedience he says having the readiness to judge all disobedience if and when your obedience is entire or complete don't forget what we are discussing a quick recap point number one that God's love for you is unconditional but walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional point number two that no amount of prayers no amount of confession no amount of spiritual activities no amount of impartation will ever substitute or replace the need for obedience. Point number three. God's power. God's power will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver before it is revealed. God's power will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver before it is revealed this is very important god's power will usually i will not write the word always and there is a reason for that because a dead man for instance does not operate by his personal faith to come back to life but god's power will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver before it is revealed Matthew 14 and verse 28 Peter was standing in the boat and looking at Jesus and he answered him and said Lord if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water and verse 29 the Bible says he said to him come and when Peter was come out of the ship he walked on water to go to Jesus the possibilities that you command is based on your attentiveness 
and your faith in Jesus he walked to Jesus if it be thou bid me come and he said come in John chapter 2 and verse 5 the wedding in Cana John chapter 2 and verse 5 the wine finished and Mary the mother of Jesus said unto the servants whatsoever he saith unto you do it not argue it not explain it not complain about it he said whatsoever he just verify that he's the one saying it and do it your miracle is connected to his voice his instructions and your obedience is someone learning in acts chapter 3 and verse 16 when the man at get beautiful was healed and they were making defense of the miracle before the council he said and his name through faith in his name had made this man strong whom ye see and know he said yeah the faith which is by him had given this man perfect soundness in the presence of you all faith in his name you can have faith in your problem it does not heal it does not change anything you can have faith in the devil absolutely it does not bring you any solution faith must be in the name of Jesus the resurrected Christ is someone learning in Hebrews chapter 4 Apostle Paul was teaching us something very powerful let's begin from verse 1 Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 1 still talking about faith and obedience it says let us therefore fear listen carefully lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it let's read verse 2 together ready one to read verse 2 for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it so hearing it is not all there is to faith add it but it was not mixed with faith many believers do not understand that God's power can be available in a place in fact God himself can be in a place and yet nothing happens the Lord opened my eyes to a scripture recently the Bible talks about the Word of God that all things were made by him is that true John 1 3 and that without him was not anything made listen carefully that was made all things were made by him I think it's Colossians 1 16 that talks about you know all things even by him were all things created that were in heaven and that on earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones dominions principalities powers they were created by him and for him and we know that the word of God does not fail the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away but that the word of God endures forever yet when that word became a man and walked upon the earth there were certain things he could not do even though the Bible says the word of God should not fail yet when the word was personified in a man he failed many times he went to a certain city and could not get certain things done so what was wrong that word that created everything without failure now was embodied in a man and he went to certain places and certain miracles could not happen and scripture had to give us that explanation he said he marveled at their unbelief not he marveled at the limitation of his power he marveled at their unbelief that means as powerful as the word is your unbelief can render it null and void the power of God will usually demand faith on the part of the receiver and I've taught you here the dynamics of faith is twofold you must have faith in Jesus and you must have faith in the vessel that he's using if you have faith in Jesus alone you will still not receive are we together when 
Peter and John saw the man at gate beautiful. They didn't tell him, look on Jesus. They said, look on us. We are the, the, it is going to come from Jesus. But now that the power is already on earth, he's done his own part. Look on us. You want to be healed? Pay attention to us and listen to what we're telling you. He says, such as I have, I have because I was given, but I have it. Are, are you listening to this now? So, when it has to do with acknowledging the sovereignty of Christ, we worship him and honor him alone. But when it has to be, do with the dynamics of the transmission of his power from the throne to the final recipient, it is not only God you need. You need God and a yielded vessel. So you need faith in Jesus and you need faith in the vessel that he will use. He says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Then he says to believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Point number four. This is where I want to dwell a bit and then we'll pray. Please lend me your attention. The fourth point. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Write it. Don't put a full stop. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Therefore, you must contend for rest in every area of your life. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Therefore, you must contend for rest in every area of your life. You know what that means? You must be willing to take personal responsibility and insist until there is rest round about. This is why we came. So please listen very carefully. I've said four things. That number one, the love of God towards you is unconditional. But that walking in the reality of his promises is highly conditional. Did we get that? Number two, that no spiritual activity sustains the power to replace obedience. Number three, that the power of God is available, but it will usually require faith on the part of the recipient to be made manifest. And then number four, that rest round about is God's desire. So we are not in confusion as to God's will and desire when it comes to our wholesome rest. Rest round about is God's desire for every believer in Christ. Therefore, you must contend for rest in every area of your life. A few scriptures. Exodus 33 and verse 14. These scriptures prove that it is God's desire to give us rest. He says, my presence shall go with you, speaking to Moses, and I will give you more than favor. I will give you more than progress. I will give you more than wisdom. I will give you more than victory. He says, I will give you rest. Are we together? In physics, when you define rest scientifically, it means two things. Number one, that there is no opposing force that is greater than the weight of that body pushing it to go to the left or right. You say that body is in a state of rest. Am I right? Or that the force that is being applied is equal to the force that is opposing and so the body is in a state of rest. That is truly the definition of rest. In order to attain rest, it means something has to be done to all the forces that sustain the power to push you like a pendulum to the left and to the right. It says, my presence will go with you as a defense and I will give you rest. Say amen. amen. In Isaiah chapter 14, we'll read from verse 3 down to 7. Please pay attention. Isaiah 14, 3 to 7. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, from thy fear, 
and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve notice the things that god wants to give you rest please go back to verse 3 he says rest from your sorrow rest from your fear and from hard bondage verse 4 it says that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of babylon and say how had the oppressor seized and the golden city seized reading to seven it says the lord had broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers verse six he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth that means it's his own turn to receive a recompense and then he says the whole earth is at rest and is quiet they break forth into singing may god give you rest in the name of jesus christ may god give you rest in first kings chapter 8 first kings chapter 8 we'll read from 54 first kings 8 from verse 54 the bible says and it was so that when solomon had made an end of the praying of praying all his prayer and supplication unto the lord that he arose from before the altar of the lord and kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven next verse he says he stood and blessed all the congregation of israel with a loud voice saying uh-huh blessed be the lord that had given rest unto his people israel according to all that he promised there had not failed one word of his good promise which he had promised by the hand of moses his servant we're reading to 56 is that 56 here so we'll, we'll just stop there everybody say rest let me give you one more scripture i wrote down here matthew 11 and verse 28 jesus himself is speaking now 11 28 matthew come unto me someone needs to answer this call today come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest is the name given to every condition that ensures you are free of any opposing force rest it is the responsibility now please listen especially for men and women of god who may be following it is the responsibility of every shepherd to walk with the spirit of god in bringing god's people into their rest in experience it is the responsibility of every shepherd to walk with the spirit of god in bringing god's people into their rest in experience please give us ezekiel 34 while studying and preparing for this miracle service i read this scripture and a new light came as though i had never read it before 34 from verse 1 please be patient as i read you can feel free to say amen but just be patient in fact say it in your heart if not you will you will disturb me but you need to listen to this very properly and the word of the lord came to me saying go ahead son of man prophesy against the shepherds in israel prophesy and say unto them thus saith the lord god or unto the shepherds woe be to the shepherds of israel that do feed themselves and not the shepherds and not the should not the shepherds feed the flocks is a question verse 2 ye eat the fat and ye clothe you with the wool ye kill them that are fed but ye feed not the flock the diseased have ye not strengthened neither have ye healed that which was sick neither have ye bound up that which was broken neither have ye brought again that which was driven away no restoration neither have ye sought that which was lost but with force and with cruelty you have ruled them next verse he says and they were scattered because there was there is no shepherd 
and they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered next verse my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill yea my flock was scattered upon the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them therefore ye shepherds hear the word of the lord verse 8 say long reading be patient as i live saith the lord surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd neither did my shepherd search for my flock but the shepherds fed themselves and not my flock therefore O ye shepherds hear the word of the Lord thus saith the Lord God behold I am against the shepherds can you see that it's possible for God to be against a man of God literally and I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the flock neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore for I will deliver my flock from their mouth that they may not be meat for them next verse when I read this verse I prayed for myself seriously for thus saith the Lord God behold I even I will both search my sheep and seek them out 12 as the shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered so I will seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day be patient we are going somewhere and I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and I will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their fold be he says there shall they lie in a good fold and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel next verse that is how God is determined to give his sheep rest I will feed my flock he says and I will cause them to lie down saith the Lord uh-huh I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which was driven away I will bind up that which was broken and strengthen that which was sick but I will destroy the fat and the strong I will feed them with judgment and as for you O my flock thus saith the Lord behold I will judge between cattle and cattle and between rams and the he goats next verse he said seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pasture but ye must tread down with your feet the residue of your pastures he says and to have drunk of the deep waters but ye must ye must foul the residue with your feet next verse it says as for my flock hallelujah that which ye have trodden with your feet and they drink that which ye have fouled with your feet look at look at what he's saying therefore thus saith that's verse go to verse 20 therefore thus saith the lord God unto them behold I even I will judge between the fat cattle and the lean cattle therefore because ye have trust with side and with shoulder and push all the diseased with your horns till ye have scattered them abroad he's describing for you the state of the sheep that has made him to say shepherd or no shepherd I am coming to make sure I rescue my sheep be patient we're almost there therefore I will save my flock and they shall no more be a prey I will judge between cattle and cattle 23 and I will set up one shepherd over them and he shall feed them even my servant David he shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd 24 and I the Lord will be their God and my servant David a prince among them I the Lord have spoken we're reading 
to 30. I think 30 or 31 is the last verse. And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing and I will cause the shower to come down in a season and there shall be showers of blessings next verse and the tree of the field shall yield her fruit and the earth shall yield her increase and they shall be safe in their land and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke and deliver them out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them 28 and they shall no more be a prey to the heathen neither shall the beasts of the land devour them but they shall dwell safely and none shall make them afraid 29 and i will raise up for them a plant of renown and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in the land neither bear the shame of the hidden anymore verse 30 listen to this read verse 30 together are you ready one to go thus shall they be known that i the lord their god am with them and that they even the house of israel are my people saith the lord that by doing all of these things, I will prove to you that you are my people. I will prove to you that I have brought you into a state of rest, defeating your enemies, making the rain to come, and so on and so forth. Very, very, very powerful scripture. The last verse and then we're done, 31. It says, and ye my flock and the flock of my pastures, amen. So he's not talking about animals in the wilderness. He's saying all this flock I've been talking about, you are men and I am your God, saith the Lord God. Tonight, everything that must happen according to this scripture to give you rest, you will find it in the name of Jesus. Now, please listen very carefully. I wrote here, why do we keep releasing our faith to contend for all round rest? why do we keep organizing miracle services after miracle services three scriptures number one micah 2 10. micah chapter 2 and verse 10. arise ye and depart for this is not your rest because it is polluted and shall destroy you even with a sore destruction the first reason why we keep contending is because where we are is not yet our rest he said arise ye and depart for where you are financially spiritually is not your rest that means we will keep organizing as many miracle services as many mini, as many ministrations as many teaching sessions until you get to your rest he said arise ye and depart for this is not your rest hebrews chapter 4 from verse 9 Hebrews 4 and 9, 4 and 9. Therefore, it says, there remained therefore a rest to the people of God. Verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he hath also ceased from his own works as God did from his. The charge is in verse 11. He says, let us labor therefore. Let us what? Not let us assume not let us fold our hands and wait for rest to come and meet us let us labor therefore to enter into that rest let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief let us labor therefore and the bible gives us the various ways that the believer labors it says honor the elders who labor in word and in doctrine so we labor in word the ministry of the word remember Acts chapter 2 from verse 42 the Bible says and they continued steadfastly in the Apostles doctrine and in fellowship number two and in breaking of bread number three and in prayers this is how we labor and then Acts chapter 6 and verse 4 
it says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word this is how we labor to enter our rest in isaiah chapter 62 isaiah chapter 62 from verse 6 to 10 62 from verse 6 or we'll just do 6 to 8 it says i have set watchmen upon thy walls o jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord keep not silence he says seven and give him no rest till he establish verse two jesus himself is giving a parable and he spoke about this woman who had no physical support system that in a city there was a judge which did not fear god nor regard man verse three he says there was in that same city a widow and she came to him and said avenge me mine adversary for but for a while he would not afterwards he told himself he said though i fear not god nor regard man verse 5 that's the key he said yet because this widow troubled me i will avenge her less by her continual coming some versions will say her importunity she weary me six verse six he says and hear what the lord says to the, about the unjust judge seven he says and shall not god avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him though he be along with them i'm showing you scriptures that justify your persistently pushing that is your labor dimension so that you don't say i came for miracle service in january i dropped my request i've not seen it happen write it again it is not unbelief that is the labor dimension of faith the bible says give him no rest until he establishes jerusalem as a praise are we together the widow was defenseless and she went to the judge and she said avenge me my adversary i'm sure he would say okay that's all right um come back again and she kept coming and the man said although i do not fear god and i did not regard man he said however this woman by her continuous coming it is jesus himself giving this so let me tell you you will pray today over what you prayed for before that has not yet happened it is not unbelief it is a labor dimension you are coming because you trust him father thank you you gave me a word that my children i will eat from my children in my lifetime it has not yet happened but i thank you because i'm in an atmosphere where it can happen therefore i have come again there is no responsible parent who should be tired of seeing their child now god wants to give us rest tonight in the name of jesus christ god wants to give us rest that means you have a responsibility to search the areas of your life where you have not yet seen rest in experience we're going to pray two kinds of prayer before i begin to minister number one will be a prayer of thanksgiving to say lord thank you for giving me rest in this area now you know the definition of rest you have taken away all the forces that that disturb me in this area thank you for giving me marital rest thank you for giving me financial rest you see but lord i thank you because you are faithful to save to the uttermost and that in in administering your rest you do it round about so while thanking you for this one i bring before you this one are we together now yes sir when you thank him for what he has done you make petitions with faith the bible says in mark chapter 11 and verse 44 it says what things soever ye desire mark 11 and um 24 not 4 mark 11 24 what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them what things soever ye desire the Bible talked about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. When it had to do with war and the matters of war, 
he had found rest he was a valiant man but the bible says he was leprous and now the time had come to do something about that leprosy and do you know how he tackled the issue of leprosy through the aid of the little slave girl he isolated every other area and just he just focused on that issue of leprosy until he was done with it thank god for the testimonies you've shared thank god for the manifest presence of god and results that you have seen in other areas but for tonight we are thanking him for what he's done but then we are placing a demand by faith on his power to say lord you can finish what you have started is someone in agreement with me <laughs> father you gave me land and have built to lintel level thank you for grace but you are not only alpha you finish what you've said, but that is not your best your best is you are a god of portions you desire to give me my own space Rehoboth, where i can say god has created my own space so while i thank you for the rent i am here tonight now that you have given me another opportunity the only person who should be silent when we begin to pray is the person who is dead but for as long as you are alive my bible says the path of the just is as a shining light even in heaven you can come up hither you may be a man of god here god has trusted you with tremendous levels of grace you can thank him for that level of anointing thank him for that level of wisdom but say lord i have come again fresh fire fresh grace hallelujah lord i thank you that even with the bracelet i can still lift up my my the, the neck uh, you know whatever it is or whatever around my waist i can still give you thanks but lord i know i can do without it father thank you because i'm hearing on one ear i thank you for the privilege to even have one walking but lord you can make both whole and so i place a demand are we together and don't let the devil deceive you and say people are talking to God about serious issues and you are bringing this one is God complaining what things soever ye desire when ye pray and my Bible says this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will that he heareth us he heareth us it's not an idol hallelujah my job prophetically tonight is as a midwife to help and guide you while you deliver because that baby must come out in the name of jesus christ that baby must come out there is a natural process of delivery for a woman and that is usually the best but if for any reason there is an unusual delay doctors have another alternative to force that baby to come out but coming out he must come out are we together? Yeah. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is he. Listen to me, I am a firm believer in Jesus Christ and I am a firm believer in the miraculous. I truly believe in miracles because my life is one, 
not just that I've seen one he has made me one I believe in miracles what is a miracle an occurrence that does not go through the normal sequence of the laws of life you see sponsored by the hand of God an act of his mercy an act of his might an act of his love this is a miracle service it's not called a suggestion service it's not called a counseling service and whatsoever name Adam called it that was the name thereof please rise up on your feet hello Madonna prayer point number one is the prayer of thanksgiving i'd like you to look at the areas where you have tasted a level of rest and say thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus somebody is praying Lord, you have helped me. Ebenezer, thus far. You have shown me mercy in this area. Thank you. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Someone is praying. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and pour your love. Are you praying? You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. Hey, hey. I'm the one you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Say, I am the one. I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. 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 One more time. Say, I'm the one. Say, I'm the one. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Someone is praying. Father, thank you. Shalega bakatoska prendege bella kosiata. Someone is praying. Lord, you have shown me mercy. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Lord, you gave me a house this year. Thank you. You restored my soul. You restored my health. Thank you. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, he says, and forget not his benefits. In the name of Jesus hallelujah next prayer point now you are going to cry father the word declares that you are able to save even to the uttermost i have come the bible says that he would not allow the seed of jacob to seek him in vain now that you have thanked him he says enter his courts with thanksgiving his gates with thanksgiving his courts with praise he says come before him with singing hallelujah listen i don't want you to keep quiet you are going to mention the areas where you must find rest lord i give you thanks for this and that area but right now i come before you trusting the god of all flesh someone pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray rest rest 
rest. There remaineth a rest. Marital rest. Financial rest. Fruitfulness rest. Business rest. Spiritual growth rest. Please pray. Every area you are yet to find rest. Call upon the God who can give rest round about. Someone it may be in your business. Someone it may be in your ministry. Someone it may be in your family. Someone it, it may be in whatever area. Let us therefore labor to enter that rest. Please pray. Shabakatos kata branda gede balakotia. Lord, grant me rest round about. You are standing in for someone. Here is the time to pray. Grant me rest. Grant me rest. That cancer, that diabetes, grant me rest. In the name of Jesus, grant me rest. Grant me rest. hallelujah we're still praying i just sense to add one prayer point second thessalonians 3 16. second thessalonians 3 16 i believe one of the indices of rest is peace second thessalonians 3 16. it says now the lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means we are going to pray that by all means prayer lord how you do it i leave it to your creativity but my heart is open visit me by all means change my story by all means it is within your power to make great it is within your power someone pray by all means you are the lord of peace Grant me rest. Grant me peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. We are praying. Unfortunately, these two most important words, we don't seem to have the courage to use them for those who are alive. We only use them for those who are dead. We say rest in Two important words that we should experience and enjoy in our lifetime. You don't have to wait until you are gone. You can experience rest and peace right now. You are not prophesying negatively. Declare it over yourself. Lord, rest and peace. You are giving it to me. In the name of Jesus. In my lifetime, I will find rest and find peace. Is someone praying? outside pray all the overflows pray online pray grant me rest grant me peace 
rest round about rest round about that you can bless me in all things my life becomes a testimony and a testament In the name of Jesus 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 listen you do not know there are ministers of the gospel here and they will tell you the greatest joy of any shepherd who truly loves his people is not his or her personal testimony is seeing God's people stand here to say look what the Lord has done look at the marvelous things turning my morning to dancing my sorrow to joy so when i engage us to pray it is my desire as for me i'm prepared and god is prepared but it's to prepare our hearts to make sure that we receive maximally please don't be tired you're still going to pray one more time say lord with my eyes and my hands i will see a performance over this issue whatever is the issue mention it that my answer will not remain in visions and dreams alone. I'm tired of seeing it in visions and then it stops there. I'm tired of having dreams and then it stops there. Tired of seeing the impartation in dreams and visions. Let it find expression. Tired of seeing the houses and the buildings in dreams and visions. Let it find expression. That which is finished from the realm of the spirit let it be made manifest here and now the word became flesh and it dwelt among men and we beheld his glory tired of seeing the job in the realm of the spirit and then i wake up and only find out i was dreaming tired of seeing the favor in the realm of the spirit make it manifest now oh god hallelujah hallelujah will you be tired if i give you a few prayer points two or three one of the ways we bring favor to our lives is through favor provoking prayers i have taught you and you have seen it here believe me i don't know how people live without the favor of god it's impossible you are going to pray and say father in this season show me favor lift your voice and pray favor end this drought in my life once and for all tired of going up financially and coming down tired of men liking me today and then everybody leaving me alone tomorrow show me favor tired of empty-handedness someone is praying cry to the god of all flesh whether you're outside whether you're online please pray and jabez pray right on to god as a family you are praying as a ministry you are praying as a business you are praying favor from heaven i've taught you that the proof of favor is not just money is that men's hearts are loyal to you please pray oh my favor has come oh my favor has come oh ah. my favor has come oh my 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Prayer point number two. Speed. Listen. Dominion over time is real dominion. No matter what you dominate, if you cannot dominate time, you are still lagging behind. It was the delay of the bridegroom that made five others to miss it out. They were prepared from the beginning and they were virgins, but they expected the bridegroom to come fast. Lord, whatever is bringing delay in my life, bring speed to my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. Bring speed to my destiny. Someone pray, someone pray, someone pray. Speed of accomplishment. Speed of establishment. Shalagada branda gada gatos koto pradiada. Shakra teke balako toso brandi gedia. Embra katos koto branda gade balako dia. Embra tos koto ba shalagade ba. We are praying. We are praying. Satos kati lakosi abanda kres Ibra tege balako tas koto brande gade balaka tosiata Ekra kato shagede balato siata barando skotia hallelujah hallelujah we are still praying speed let me show you a scripture that will bless you genesis 27 let's start from verse 18 please hurry up give it to us genesis 27 verse 18 do you know what happened here this was jacob and esau isaac sent esau he said go to the field and hunt and bring me meat and then the mother of Jacob and Esau told Jacob, he said, go behind the house and bring one. And he made it quickly. This is Jacob now, disguising as Esau. There's a statement I want you to see. And he came unto his father and said, Father, and he said, I am here. Who art thou, my son? 19. And Jacob said to his father, I am Esau. I have done according as thou bathest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me now watch this 20 and isaac said unto him how is it that has thou has found it so quickly what did you do that may, you are not supposed to get this result under normal circumstances with this speed his answer is our next prayer point and he said because the lord thy god brought it to me someone is going to pray lord bring it to me it is within your power bring it to me one of the ways we experience speed is that God will bring it to you. Lord, bring it to me. Bring it to me. What I am looking for, it can look for me. You can bring it to me. You can bring the job to me by your mercy. How come you have found it so quickly? He says the Lord brought it to me. Some of you as you are praying, you are already receiving supernatural answers. Bring it to me, oh God. The destiny help us. I am tired of looking for them. Lord, bring it to me. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now please listen. We are going to minister. We will pray for the sick. But my focus tonight. Is these two areas. The area of favor. And the area of speed. Listen. It is impossible 
for you to not laugh when God honors you on this wise that God brings favor the proof of favor is not money you don't need favor to have money with wisdom alone can sort that but the loyalty of the hearts of men towards you that is favor when Jesus was born the Magi because of what was on him they came all the way from the east when men come they don't come empty the Bible says they came and met a baby bringing him the gift of gold frankincense and man when God was restoring Job in Job chapter 42 the 11th verse his restoration happened because all his acquaintances and all those who had left him the Bible says the first thing that happened when God was restoring Job was that his acquaintances all the people who had left him the Bible says his brethren all his sisters who left him that means one of the ways that the devil attacks men is to remove men from your life God can handpick men but when there is a mass exodus of useful people it's an attack did you hear what I said one time he told the apostle he said don't be afraid I have many men in this city that means it's not only angels I have I have many men who can protect and defend your cause favor favor I have prayed this for you every day and I will continue to pray it because I have discerned and I have seen in my life and in this ministry it is impossible to truly sustainably do anything without favor the number one reason why people fail more than demonic attack is the absence of favor because when you have the favor of God you can rule even in the midst of your enemies hallelujah praise the name of the Lord God bless you now I'm going to pray for you listen what does it mean to pray for people it's more than just falling down I want you to understand this what your expectation should not just be to fall down and to stand up you can fall down and stand up and honestly not receive anything are we together that can just be the effect of the movement of God's power your physical body that you may not be able to stand but when I say I am praying for you the first thing is that your eyes should be on Jesus your faith should be alive you are now listening for when your word comes and you are receiving it by faith and if and where the miracle should manifest now like healing you are insisting that it happens I'm going to pray for you because there are demon spirits and I'm going to ask you to bring them out for as long as I live I will never stop casting out demons for as long as I live I will never stop trust standing in faith with Jesus to set the captives free there are invisible spirits standing at the corridors of men's destinies and frustrating the purposes of God listen when you see that certain battles are beyond the scope of humans there is a spirit at work but now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph are you ready I want to pray for you I want you to bring them out here we're going to be very fast because I want to take out time to pray for the sick there are people who are under all kinds of yokes manipulations of darkness some of you are coming here for the first time some of you have come because you are completely confused what is the name of what is going on with my life nothing seems to be working I want to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus and at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus and that fire from heaven will fall upon anything that does not name the name of Christ and get it out of your life are you ready father we give you all the glory I'm telling you I'm already sensing such power from heaven one two three shout Jesus I decree and declare right now everything that is not of God Give way now. Give way now. Every altar, every orchestration of darkness, I command that it must leave. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. In the name of Jesus, please help them. In the name of Jesus Christ.
hallelujah now i'm seeing something that looks like a chain but i'm seeing it on the heads of people being removed not hands on the heads i decree and declare as many who are victims of this i bring you deliverance right now from the throne in the name of jesus bring them out i bring you deliverance right now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus 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 my god i'm seeing fire coming on people i'm seeing at least the number 44 this is inside and outside and the lord is bringing deliverance not only for you but this is for your entire family they have prayed this is witchcraft that has tied down families some of you will be all right but the power of god will still come on you on behalf of your family in the name of jesus I bring them out be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now hallelujah the lord is asking me to pray for people the moment you go to bed encounters with dead people those who have already gone what what fellowship has the living and the dead in the name of we're not talking of the spirits of just men made perfect we're talking of demon spirits i'm about to pray for you now the power of god is coming upon you that every association connecting you to the grave and connecting you to the dead he must give up father i decree and declare let your power rest now and bring liberty 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 liberty, liberty liberty in the name of jesus oh death where is your sting and oh grave where is your victory oh death where is your sting oh grave where is your victory the lord is showing me the map of nigeria and i'm seeing the anointing of the spirit go to emo state emo and, and the power of god is coming on people now that are connected to that state this is, is is a sign and a wonder how god does it in the name of jesus anyone under any kind of yoke connected to ancestry from this region be delivered right now 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 every time a miracle is about to happen to you you will have a dream in the night either someone molesting you or something happens and that is the end of it somebody who said i will favor you will turn against you i decree and declare by the decree of the watchers by the power that raised christ from the dead every altar sponsoring delay and sponsoring um abortions of great dreams just when it's about to happen i cause it right now i cause it bring them out i cause it right now listen many of you have heard the stories of people they will tell you i suddenly got a job that i applied for in 2017 it did not just happen there are spirits that stop it but when they are taken away upon mount zion there shall be deliverance then holiness then possessing of possessions there is someone you are at the back you are a man of god i just saw fire come on you you don't even know why ministry has not been working the lord is visiting you i'm seeing at the back there is such such anointing that glory is just resting upon someone and breaking that yoke of delay in ministry that people come and they go they come and they go there is no staying and there's no growing 
in the name of Jesus wherever that person is may the power of God touch you right where you are in the name of Jesus Christ do you know there is the spirit of poverty then there is the mindset of poverty if the only thing you correct is the mindset you will still be poor there is the spirit of poverty there is the mindset of poverty then there is the absence of value and productivity all of these are factors that ultimately lead to poverty you can find your place in terms of providing value but if the spirit and the mindset is not corrected you will still be poor you can provide value and even upgrade your mind but the limitation of intellect it cannot cross beyond to the realm of the spirit and correct spiritual things are we together the same way the spirit of poverty can be cast away but the mindset of poverty can remain you will still be poor the mindset of poverty can go away and the spirit of poverty can go away but then if there is no value and productivity you may it may not amount to much you will just have an epileptic financial life here you will learn the whole counsel of God it is the value and productivity but then the transition that happens to you mentally but ultimately the king of Tyre he sits in Tyre and Sidon himself he lifted Jesus and took him into an exceeding high mountain and said showed him all the kingdoms and the glories and he said I will give you this is not the issue of you are transformed I will it's a transaction we will do from the realm of the spirit I want to rebuke that spirit there is a real spirit of poverty I have seen people who spent 10 20 years in the US and will return back when you see them in the village today respectfully speaking you will never believe that they've even traveled even to the, the state the capital it's a spirit when you find out four or five graduates all with PhD and the least person respectfully speaking is maybe some teacher somewhere earning 20,000 with PhD this is more than the issue of value there is a spirit my assignment is to deal with spirits hear me anytime you see that you are not where you use where you should be and from a physical standpoint all that should be in place is in place there is a spirit stopping you let me pray for someone in app see many people the power of god will come on so many people over this prayer father i am praying that every territorial altar that has sponsored poverty generational hardships you are still going to shout that name jesus i decree and declare at the shout and the blast of that name jesus let the fire of god fall and deliver families are you ready now one two three shout jesus i command that altar to give way now bring them out i cost that spirit i cost that spirit i cost that spirit tying down families tying down destinies be lifted in the name of Jesus my God miracles are happening here deliverances of all sorts please help them so they don't enjoy themselves bring them out if you can hallelujah hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze 
and don't forget to like for us thank you